Battlefield 2042. The game that has and is still hyped since the announcement from the trailer on June 9th. After a long wait, which was overly exaggerated, the beta was finally released and in my opinion, I had fun, it was good. To a certain extent though. My basic TR, TLDR of the beta is that the game was fun, as I said earlier, but I don't think I could re recommend it for $60 or whatever edition you decide to get for if you have the money. And this just comes down to preference. I had fun with the game, and because of that, I don't think I will cancel my pre-order. And that would just have that's just the consequences of my action at that point. What else can be said? The feel of the beta where bugs weren't a, an issue, I would say that I really like how the gun feels and the movement from what I was able to tell. The guns have no recoil from what I remembered, but so, uh, COD and Battlefield and all these games usually don't anymore because it's a more casual game at this point games are being more casual that's why people are always so hyped for games that are hardcore quote unquote uh controlling the the recoil of the gun it's just but it is what it is it's a skill you pick up from just playing games overall now the movement is weird in my opinion as they added tactical sprint which was a change I didn't expect, and that, in my opinion, is a bit too much. I enjoyed the sliding from Battlefield 1, because it wasn't really a slide, it was more like a little dash that you could make up for just running normally. And Battlefield 5 sliding became a habit for me because of how strong it felt, just sliding everywhere and into every engagement. And in Battlefield Beta, the slide is still there, nothing much changed. But they added tactical sprint, which I don't see a use for it in the battlefield game. In COD, it was, I mean, it is what it is. It's just there. And they want to keep it as Vanguard also has it. But I don't think it belongs in battlefield. Battlefield might turn into just a different COD with more players. Talking about that, more players. On maps like Orbital, more players could be useful. As that map is way too big in my opinion. Barely any engagements from my 6-8 hours of playing. It, which isn't a lot of course to some people. But I felt like on one map 6 hours was crazy. Especially since there was barely anything to do. It felt more of me having a safari simulator than me actually having a war. The sector part, before I go back on the player count, the sectors, or conquests as most as it, they're trying to be branded as, sectors and conquests don't make sense. I don't enjoy the sectors, even though when I first heard about it, I thought it was a good idea. Oh, well, was I wrong? The reason why I thought it was a good idea is because it's just something different, and I don't mind doing something different. But once you capture one part of a sector to get the other one, so you can actually get the whole point, the other team does the same, and then you just go back and forth into a loop until you both finally engage each other, then eventually it's just going to be one team finally gets it, but then has to cap the point. And you can respawn in the same amount of time. They leave, you can just start capturing. It's just It leads to more what I call rat gameplay, because there's no fights. It's just people hiding in corners, waiting for the other team to leave. And it's just a rinse and repeat that will lead to stalemates every encounter, in my opinion. Players. The players, I thought was a good idea because it's just more gunfights, more engagement. Don't see a problem with it. But this engine cannot handle this many players. Frostbite engine, I don't think it can handle 64 players well sometimes. So doubling it to 128 seemed like a really ambitious idea but did not go well when they executed it as you can see at this clip that i'm about to show you it, i just stopped caring about this helicopter that was even though it wasn't that far if i just drove up and i most likely would have been fixed at that point the issue it was i was still why is it isn't even happening my mind was boggled
Oh, I wanna let me do the animation. the player lagging man well, behind me. What about behind me? so yeah the cliff is that helicopter was just using a rod of discourse from Terria and it was like I couldn't do anything even in the cliff you see you can hear me say I don't care anymore like I just gave up halfway that fight it was annoying to try and deal with, and I didn't care about killing the helicopter anymore. Now, the hot topic of mo of the Battlefield 2042. Everywhere you see everything is about specialists. And in my opinion, I thought specialists were a good idea. It's something new, as I said. I like, I like seeing new ideas. But in the end, it, was, it just ruined game, uh, the teamwork in the game. No teamwork. Hell, even me, I was on the, whatever her name was, I don't remember, I can't be bothered remembering their name. The one that can self-heal and just heal in general, with her specialist ability, I was playing her all the time, and just to heal myself, even the other classes were a lot better, I just played her to just heal myself from every gunfight, with the AA rocket launcher, because I just want, I want to destroy the helicopters that were bothering me, and I was just able to heal myself never became an issue for me to need ammo because uh, I just died at that point or me needed health because I healed myself and there just no there was no incentive for me needed to play engineer I could just heal myself go into gunfight kill when the gunfight heal myself again go do another gunfight and not care about anyone else around me as I'm a as I'm the ultimate soldier and uh, I mean, what else can be said there? The class class system was very nice, especially since I'm playing like old, the older games like Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1. It really just shows the difference that the class system provide a unique situation for everything. Except snipers. Fuck snipers. And, <laughs> and I essentially think that specialists should go. I don't mind specialists in the first place. But the only thing that especially should fit in is in the new mode, ha uh, whatever, Hazard Zone? Yeah, Hazard Zone. Where it can make a good difference to be a different specialist, which would still be a nightmare balancing compared to multiplayer. But it will make sense because they're showing off Hazard Zone and with all the lore and all that it's supposed to be a high value target to pick up these hard drives that fell. And. So why don't you send the best of the best and have foot soldiers work on the fight itself over there? And but it's not nothing much. Overall, it, the beta was fun. I won't cancel the pre-order because I don't tend to cancel pre-orders in the first place. And also, I also tend to pay my games for one dollar is one hour, which is standard I think for most people. And I know I can pay it back two times, maybe three times fold. Portal's gonna be mostly where I probably stay at. I can, I'll probably like just create fun games for me, and my friends. But I won't see any f much future. Specialists are really a huge part of the game in base multiplayer, because all I see them as as after I play the beta is a cash grab for skins like Warzone and COD are doing at this point. But I don't recommend the game, obviously. Not in this state. Probably won't recommend it once it fully releases. But I won't judge it until it's fully out. Because that's what they quote unquote have a finished product. But in the end, beta was fun. Don't pre-order it in my opinion. Gonna stick with my pre-order. And that's all. Thank you for watching my video.